When we think of attack helicopters, myself included, we often consider a dichotomy. We see the Apaches and Tigers against Black Sharks and MI-28s. We think of Cobras and Mangustas against, potentially, the MI-23. Even going back further, we just see helicopter gunships going against each other in the most rudimentary form of modern attack helicopter. In the modern day, though, there are three countries developing incredible potential that aren't necessarily recognised. Beyond the UK, France, Germany, the US, Italy, Spain and Russia, we forget about China, Turkey and India. Now, the one that I think is the most important and the most potent of all of those is India. India now utilises an attack helicopter called the HAL Pratchland. And today I thought it might be worth an introduction, and have I probably butchered that name? Yes, but I do not speak Hindi. So the first thing to note is that this is uh, this helicopter uh, was first formally introduced to the military in 2021. And it's an Indian-run project solely, so it's modern and it's domestic, which is hugely important because India has often in the past four... Uh, particularly military vehicles, being a sort of mishmash of getting them from where they can. Pratchland is an independent project, and in Hindi it means fierce. And for what it is, it really certainly is fierce. The HAL stands for Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. Now that is a name you will hear come up a lot. It's a state-owned Indian defence firm, so it's quite common. It produces a lot of stuff for the Indian military, and it will continue to do so as India becomes more independent in that regard. Inspiration for the Pratchland came from the Kargil War with Pakistan, where India realised that it really needed uh, rotary wing platforms that could operate at high altitude, because the war took place, and again, I'm not actually sure, do not quote me on this, because I have limited knowledge on these sorts of conflicts, I believe the Kargil War took place around somewhere in Kashmir, and Kashmir, or at least a chunk of it, is located, would probably be the West Himalayan Mountains. So it's quite important that altitude is factored in. So, they determined that they needed something that would be able to go to high altitudes, more lightweight, more mobile. And during testing, it was really emphasised that Pratchland is lightweight, it can reach 6,500 metres, which is ridiculously high. It's incredibly mobile and it's really quite advanced. Uh, it had to be something multi-role, able to take on infantry armour, potentially even UAS, slower moving air-based targets as well. Something that can be adapted for counterinsurgency missions, air defence destruction, urban warfare. The point is, it's really versatile. Pratchland has, like the Apache, a two-seat cockpit containing a pilot and a gunner. The gunner utilises the M621 cannon, as well as other armaments featured on the platform hardpoints, which are on either side of the vehicle. Um, and these hardpoints can integrate a lot of different munitions, so anti-armour, anti-air capability. From a plethora of different countries, they're still utilising a lot of versatile munitions. But notably, it's also compatible with the Helena tank, uh, anti-tank missile, which is an Indian-developed missile. So, uh, it can utilise missiles, rocket systems, in-pod orientation, and all of this uses an integrated helmet-mounted sight, as well as a pretty advanced degree of HUD. The vehicle itself has incredible stealth, not only because of its smaller profile and composite, ma composite materials in its own construction, uh, but it's also, and this actually does blow my mind a little, it utilises digital camouflage systems. And what that means is that it can change its colour and camouflage based upon the environment, aided by computer sensors. So, no painting, none of that. It's, you know, partially electronic. So it's effectively a flying chameleon instead of, you know, well, instead of having a really long tongue, uh, it has a cannon that spits out you know, many rounds a minute, and missiles. Pratchland also utilises other features to reduce its radar cross-section, as you would expect for, you know, quite a few attack helicopters. 
It uses exhaust covers to reduce uh, infrared signature as well as thermal visibility. In addition to this, they've taken an active role in trying to sort of dampen the noise down. They've tried to make it pretty quiet. It has a number of measures to make sure that the noise is reduced and general vibrations from the propeller uh, and the Shakti engines uh, or engine are basically reduced to far below what they normally would be. And this actually isn't just about stealth. It's also practical because it means that systems, the gun particularly, can fire in a more stabilized manner. So the engine itself as well, which, as I said, I think it's the Shakti engine. Uh, it has a self-sealing fuel tank, which is, again, an incredible advancement in technology. If it gets shot, if it gets damaged, it can, a lot of the time, just close up again, which, you know, reduces the effect of fuel leakage, uh, of damage to the engine itself, which is an important thing. It also has an HUD, which combines with a TADS system. And that, alongside the glass cockpits with inbuilt uh, projection features, really make it powerful for targeting. It has multiple warning systems for radar, for incoming missiles, for lasers. And with this, it's also got its own laser rangefinder, designator, an infrared sensor, a CCD camera, and general visibility from the glass cockpit. It operates in all weather conditions and at night, of course and all of this technology really works all the time. So it's constant, and that makes it even more versatile because it can operate at any time and in any weather. To top it all off, it also has a great network uh, with sort of data link, force multiplication power, uh, really all sorts of stuff. And what we're going to see soon, I believe, is probably more integration as you see multiple units coming in and being able to communicate perhaps a little bit better as the longbow does. So do I prefer it to the longbow? No. But should it be ignored with the degree of advanced technology that isn't featured on any other rotary wing aircraft, and, you know, at the very least is impressive in its own right? Obviously not, it shouldn't be ignored. It's really very advanced, and one of the most capable attack helicopters on the planet, and to deny that and to ignore it as it largely is, is foolish in my view. It's hugely versatile, very lightweight, has excellent operational capability, and that's only going to improve with upgrades. It's only just arrived, and it's, you know, already pretty damn good. So, I'd keep your eye on Pratchland.